As disappointing Rocket Lake may appear, today I'm presenting you quite the comparison. Previously I've put the very disappointing Core i9-11900K through its paces, but today's spotlight is on the Intel Core i7-11700K, yet another Rocket Lake CPU equipped with 8 cores and 16 threads as well. Out of the box it's clocked similarly and costs a whole lot less money than the i9. And this is why the title of this video makes sense. Bad enough for Intel that AMD comes out on top in so many aspects, but with the i7-11700K, Intel very likely introduced their very own nemesis, so to speak. How much of a gap is there actually between the i7 and i9? Is it really just a difference in clock speeds, making up the significant difference in pricing? To get to the bottom of the question, I've invested a little extra time in work and agreed to challenge myself by overclocking today's i7-11700K to exactly the same clock speed I overclocked the i9-11900K to. Long story short, besides tests at stock settings, I've overclocked both CPUs to 5.1 GHz respectively and we'll see how they compare against each other. Will the i7-11700K be able to catch up to the i9-11900K this way? You see, things are starting to get exciting here. However, to fully understand and comprehend the current situation, here's a quick summary of the prices. Due to the still horrible state of the PC hardware market, I'm once again forced to stick to the MSRP, the manufacturer's suggested retail price. Still, I will mention what current street prices are looking like. Let's start with the i7-11700K. According to the MSRP by Intel, we'd have to shell out 399 US dollars for it. Glancing over to retail pricing, we're looking at about $430. An i9-11900K, once again also sporting the same core and thread count, according to the MSRP, costs $539. Street prices right now shockingly suggest about $800. As you can see, quite the difference, but there's more. The i7-10700K, the direct predecessor of today's i7-11th gen CPU, according to the MSRP, cost $374 last year. Checking retail prices right now, well, we're looking at $320. Last but not least, the X flagship model of 2020 by Intel, the i9-10900K. Keep in mind, this one comes equipped with 10 cores and 20 threads and goes for $488 MSRP. The street price is at roughly $630 currently. One can already suspect the i7-11700K to put the i9-11900K in a pretty bad spot. But to which extent, you'll find out in this video. Before we get started, I'd like to thank the kind and brave Spartan warrior named Jorgios over at the hardware shop Equipper for getting a hold of not only today's i7 CPU, but also that i5 processor I will soon have a video about. Thank you Jorgios. Let's fly over the new things Intel brings to the table with the Rocket Lake launch. The biggest and most noteworthy improvement might be the official support for PCI Express 4.0, something AMD has been offering us since 2019. On paper, such an i7-11700K is clocked lower than its predecessor 10700K. The clock speed also is lower than the one seen on the i9-11900K. It's worth noting though that with Rocket Lake, the capacity of level 2 cache has doubled, a fact I mistakenly failed to mention in my last video. And yeah, other than that, DDR4 3200MHz RAM now is natively being supported. Unfortunately, Intel seemingly is still stuck with their 14 nanometer plus 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 manufacturing process. A matured process is great, but there comes a point where we just have to admit ourselves the quirk term simply has to be old or outdated. But then again, it's not that easy actually moving down to 10 nanometers or something below that. Anyway, for testing and overclocking, I'll once again stick to my trusty, reliable ASRock Z590 PG Velocita or Velocita motherboard featuring the new Intel Z590 chipset. I will cool the CPU with my usual Deepcool Castle 240EX AIO liquid cooler. The final piece of the puzzle, as always, being the graphics card. That one going by the name of ASUS RTX 3090 Tough Gaming OC. 
For today's experiment, besides leaving everything at stock settings, I've also overclocked the i7-11700K to 5.1 GHz, the same exact clock speed I overclocked the i9-11900K to. As the expected coincidence would have it, I got away with the same exact 100 mV offset CPU core voltage setting within the BIOS. However, I've gone with the load line calibration level 3. Now let's compare the actual CPU voltages the CPUs are operating at at full load. The 11700K and 11900K both overclocked to 5.1 GHz. Please excuse the poor video recording quality on the i7 side. I accidentally recorded the screen at 1080p instead of 4K. Both CPUs operate at about 1.38 to 1.39 volts, plus minus 0.01 volt. Yet it needs to be pointed out that the i7 from time to time drops down to 5 GHz on a couple of cores for a very short period of time during the test run. Expectedly in the single core test, both then run at 5.1 GHz as they should be. What are things looking like at stock settings though without any overclocking? At full load, the i7 clocks up to 4.6 GHz and is able to sustain that clock for a very long period of time. The voltage is setting around 1.22 to 1.23 volts in the meantime. The i9 on the other hand clocks 200 MHz higher at 4.8 GHz across all 8 cores. The voltage is higher though, 1.25 to 1.26 volts. So we certainly can expect different temperatures as well as a lower power consumption with that i7 processor. The max achieved boost clock with the 11700K is at about 5 GHz. The 11900K manages to hit 5.3 GHz. In game, in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the 11900K, in terms of clock speeds, leaves the 11700K behind. However, we can easily make up for the gap with a little bit of overclocking. I would like to point out though that both CPUs didn't go any further than 5.1 GHz without having to apply an excessive amount of voltage. So as far as bidding goes for overclocking, at least with my two specific samples, there doesn't seem to be any difference. But enough talking, it's time to unveil the test results. Enjoy!
I'll try to keep it shorter this time around. When comparing the out-of-the-box performance, basically everything at stock settings, there's not actually that much of a difference noticeable between the i7 11700K and the i9 11900K. The difference in clock speeds, in fact, doesn't appear to be having that big of an impact. The title for the better value or price to performance ratio between the two, without a doubt, has to go to the i7 11700K. As was to be expected, that one not only runs a whole 10 degrees Celsius cooler than the i9 11900K in my test, but also consumes significantly less power. Nonetheless, despite that power draw being lower, it's still far from being praiseworthy by any means. Especially when factoring in what the direct predecessor i7 10700K from 2020 draws. When comparing against AMD's current power efficient processors, Intel doesn't even stand a chance with Rocket Lake in the higher end segment. But then again, there's a silver lining with the i7 11700K. We are no longer talking of catastrophic power draw, and generally speaking, both the 11700K as well as i9 11900K offer extremely good performance, especially when it comes to gaming. Albeit, the i7 10700K from 2020 pretty much offers just as much performance while costing less. And an i9 10900K with 10 cores makes the top of the line chip of the Rocket Lake lineup appear pretty miserable to say the least. At least with Rocket Lake, there now is PCI Express 4.0 support, even though there aren't any advantages with graphics cards yet, since we're still within the PCIe 3.0's bandwidth limits. You could, however, make use of those lightning fast NVMe SSDs. So we, realistically speaking, could grab a Comet Lake CPU of the yesteryear in order to save some money if we really want to go down the Intel route. Admittedly, AMD overall is the better choice for the majority of us right now though, especially if multi-core performance along with efficiency is of some importance besides good gaming performance. Let's talk overclocking. My guess has been confirmed. The i7 11700K and i9 11900K can be overclocked to the same exact clock speed, thus plus minus somewhat identical performance numbers, except for some anomalies that is. The CPUs even share their spotlight when it comes to their catastrophic power draw when overclocked, with a minor discrepancy. So it becomes clear we are practically dealing with the same exact CPUs, one simply being clocked lower out of the box. The flagship model of the series, i9 11900K, therefore ends up being somewhat pointless with the i7 11700K's existence. On the one hand, sad for Intel, but on the other hand, that also puts a better light onto the high-end Rocket Lake segment, because you can now get comparable performance for considerably less money. Those few percent of extra performance you get to see with the 11900K aren't really worth the price premium you're paying. If you still can't live without those few percent, just go ahead and overclock the i7 a little and you're good. To sum things up, generally speaking, very good gaming performance, the offered multi-core performance is good too, but the competition AMD does it better. Temperatures are totally okay and the power consumption at stock settings, given the offered overall performance, is somewhat okay. One can live with it. It's not good, but not unthinkable to deal with. I would however strongly advise against overclocking any of these two processors to 5.1 GHz. You almost need your own power plant assigned to your power grid to handle that load. 4.9 or 5 GHz certainly would be a good compromise. At the end of the day, it comes down to pricing and that's where you have to make your choice. Now we'll just have to wait and see what Intel comes up with their next generation, codenamed Alder Lake. Apparently after many years, we should finally be able to say goodbye to the 14 nanometer process, and if rumors turn out to be true, we could be looking at up to 16 cores within the mainstream lineup, just as it's the case with AMD. Things are getting exciting for us enthusiasts. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this one. Until next time, and make sure to take care of yourselves.